kill all this stuff here. So I don't need them. All right. We'll get started with the live stream, everybody, at uh, noon if you're hanging out. Uh, please use the chat function in YouTube to talk to us, uh, ask questions if you'd like. Uh, we'll look at the, the chat and we'll see what's going on. All right. Let me see here. Let me get everything turned off too. Exactly. Yeah. How many things do I have running that shouldn't be? Okay, here are my notes. All right. Let me share the stuff that I have in here on Slack with you. Okay. Ah! Okay, sorry, my uh, browser took over my world just now. Okay, so. Okay. Here's everything for the show for you cool. that I have thrown in there as random topics. Okay. Put myself on do not disturb. This is exciting for everybody who's watching the live stream, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Uh, so yeah, we'll start with the uh, tech chat Tuesday uh, in about two or three minutes. How's Maybe that? some filler music or something. Maybe that could be your next project with your fancy tool. It should be, it should be like polka or something. Just just the my my Polish heritage should come in. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> we'll have a barrel of code. All right. uh, uh, let's see here. That was a bad joke. They get worse. <laughs> We're you starting know, off good today. <laughs> yeah, you know how it works. You've worked with me long enough. So and let me tell Slackbot to be quiet. All right. So how's your home renovation coming? Your new home? Oh, it's going good. I was doing the Craigslist schlepping all weekend long. So like, <laughs> sell down a table, get the new table, like just back and forth with people. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, I find that Craigslist is really, that, that's actually the whole like tech that brings you joy segment we're going to bring up. I love that Craigslist hasn't changed in years. Not a thing. Doesn't like, have to. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They still have curb alerts. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, um, it's kind of special in that way. It's great. It's great. All right, what time is it here? One more minute. And another thing, too, is like Craigslist is like, I feel like it's just slated towards a slightly older crowd. So we're mm -hmm. sort of in furniture right now. You find some really good stuff, like whether it's like an estate sale and someone doesn't know that the side chair that they're selling is an actual work of art from like, a furniture architect or you win you know, score once in a while on there. Yeah. Yeah. Love yeah, that absolutely. stuff. <laughs> All right, let's put ourselves in the uh, share screen world here. I love that. Welcome Whoa. to the inner sanctum. <laughs> Folks, we're supposed to do something like this after that. And let me hide my bookmark bar so people don't see everything I'm working on. Oh, that's fun. It's weird. You have to actually open a new window. That's not the window I want. Oh. <sighs> Look at my fun desktop. That's hey, everybody. Yeah, there we go. Go over there. All right, folks. Um, I'm just about ready to start. Um, I'm just trying to get my Chrome to not show its stupid bookmarks window. So let me just. Yeah. <laughs> I really feel like all of a sudden Apple has just decided to mess with you. Like stuff doesn't work the same way. Oh, yeah, like just for funsies to see. Yeah. Just, riled just, up, just, they can get their users. Like, I don't want the bookmarks bar. Say, so, okay, I'll go on a rant. I don't want the bookmarks bar. I don't want people to see what I'm working on. Well, actually, nothing in there matters, let's say, I don't think. As I widen this out. You want me to switch the camera view while you configure? I think that's good enough. Who All cares right. what I'm working on? Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, yeah, so yeah, feel free to be camera monster because um, I'm I'm not going to be today. I don't. All right. Um, hello, everybody, and welcome to the tech tech chat Tuesday. <laughs> I remember the name of the darn thing. I used to, the Terry Techcast uh, <laughs> tech chat Tuesdays for 
the date of Tuesday, August 18th, 2020. I had to look that up because I don't remember the day anymore in this world that never ends, that ends up in your house 90% of the time. Uh, I'm Ken Rimple. I'm Becca Rever. And we are glad to talk to you today. A uh, couple things. Let's get off, uh, start with the news items. Um, there's some pretty big news items going on right now in the world of tech. Uh, one of them, which isn't a great one, uh, is Mozilla. Uh, now, Mozilla is starting to um, cut costs more. Uh, everyone is starting to cut costs more. You're seeing layoffs and you're seeing consolidations uh, in this COVID-19 uh, economy. Um, but it looks like they're going to be focusing on making money more than they are in their foundation work, which they have to do, I mean, because they're a business. But also, it is kind of, you know, a sad moment because, you know, they were sponsoring a lot of open source projects. And so on The Verge here, you'll see this article, and we'll, we'll post these uh, in the show notes. Uh, they're now going to plan to focus on Pocket, which I use every single day mm -hmm. uh, to bookmark things and come back to them later, uh, their VPN and other privacy products. Um, certainly that's a quarter of their workforce. So we now know there are about a thousand people here, uh, and they're going to refocus some teams on projects designed to make money, as it says in the article. Um, and so some of the things that, uh, got hit were the rust team, uh, the rust language team, uh, as well as some of the, uh, I think it's web, uh, uh, web assembly compiler tooling, uh, teams that they're working uh, on things with. I believe that's correct. So those are uh, pretty significant layoffs um, and, you know, something that's sad. Uh, and hopefully those people find work elsewhere that's uh, rewarding, fulfilling. Well, didn't they have a, a little program or offering? It was like Mozilla Life Raft or something like that? Good question. So Mozilla Lifeboat, and that's exactly the next one. So, yeah. So So the other thing is there were some people out there uh, it looks like it's some people that were ex Mozillans, uh, which is the name they give people who are no longer with Mozilla, Mozillans, um, where they were Mozillans and now they're not. Uh, so what's really cool in the community is they put together this Mozilla Lifeboat website uh, and they basically list all the companies where there is a Mozillan contact with job openings for people that might be interested in working for that company. So, for example, right at the top, you've got GitHub and MongoDB, and DuckDuckGo, and Automatic, it does WordPress, and Dropbox, and Robinhood, and all these other companies, so CircleCI. Awesome. Isn't it great? And all yeah. of them, it lists who the Mozillan is for them. So Asana, um, there's the uh, person in LinkedIn from Asana, uh, or Asana rather, who's uh, sponsoring or at least uh, posting and someone available to talk to. Um, you know, even in, you know, companies like Apple, there's Ryan Flint, who's an ex-Mozillan. Uh, and they're looking for project management, software, hardware, QE engineers. I knew a number of those people are the type of people who were laid off too. So, you know, certainly it's a good thing that the community is stepping up and, and helping out uh, Mozilla uh, people who are losing their jobs. Yeah, so, that's such a good act of solidarity there. Really appreciate that. It really is, isn't it? Yeah. So, okay. So those are the big news items that I have. Um, I have a couple of things. Let's talk about blog posts. Um, I like this other thing, Laws of UX, uh, that is uh, a bunch of kind of, you know, we had that interview uh, with uh, Alex Hillman on the tiny MBA, right, with the little kind of cones around uh, MBA concepts running businesses. This is kind of the same thing where it has these little tiny tips um, and, and laws, they call them laws, but they're kind of in a tip format where there's only a small miniature sentence that, that explains it. So the aesthetic usability effect, for example, users often perceive aesthetically pleasing design as a design that's more usable. And then you click learn more and you get a whole write-up on it. Um, and apparently they have posters. Let's check out the poster. Ooh. See, now this might be something you might like, Becca. Oh, that, I know, that's so pretty. My yeah. eyeballs are delighting right now. Yeah. So that's the noise your eyeballs make when they delight, I guess. Um, and, you know, they, they go on Doherty oh, threshold. Wow. <laughs> Productivity soars when a computer and its users interact at a pace less than 400 milliseconds that ensures neither has to wait on the other. Hmm. So that's interesting. And, of course, you go to your learn more. Boom. So it turns out that this has been around for a while. I just stumbled on it. I think Pocket threw it in my interesting items uh, list, speaking of Pocket, and we don't sponsor them. Uh, they also have a book uh, that was built based on these law uh, rules here. Uh, and it's called uh, Laws of UX Using Psychology to Design Better Products and Services, First Edition. 
Uh, and so that is a book that is based on uh, this website. So if you're into user experience stuff, if you're wrestling with user interface design and, and interacting with users, uh, this is another source of information that might be useful to you. Hmm. All right. Um, next we have, uh, remember uh, a couple of weeks ago I mentioned this uh, developer who created a basic uh, interpreter for Arduino devices? For <laughs> yeah. Internet things. Wait, I'm not done because now, uh, whoops, hey, look at this again. Uh, the bloopers reel is going to be great. Um, Micro Python. So it turns out that someone took Python 3 and did a small subset of the standard library of Python, all the libraries of calls you can make, as well as Python 3 itself, and created Micro Python. Uh, and it's meant to be embedded in microcontrollers and small environments. What's interesting is they have their own Python board called the Pi board and a couple of other electronic circuits out there that... Um, you know, it's like 35 bucks for one. Um, if you want an accelerometer, it's uh, 28 bucks. Um, it looks like there's a light version that has that. Um, and so they've got these different like pieces of hardware that run Python. They actually even run the Python REPL in it. So you can actually fire up the device, interact with it through Python in an interactive form to call APIs, which is really cool. So that's called MicroPython, and it's at micropython.org. Whoa. Neat, huh? The geek in me is like going, yay. All right. Uh, I have another one. Um, so I just got off a project and I'm kind of uh, moving on to the next one. And the project that was on uh, had, it was, a, it was an AWS based uh, application. So it was running an Amazon Web Services and it ran uh, a web application that could, you know, be tested um, through web testing tools like Selenium or something. Uh, and Sherry, it's been doing a lot of work lately with something called Cypress. So let me pull up Cypress to show you what I'm talking about. Cypress is a testing tool, cypress.io. Uh, and it's a web testing tool that it, it, if anybody who has worked with Selenium and then works with Cypress falls in love with it enough, if they're testers, um, to not really want to strangle it. Um, it does a lot of great things. It does multiple browser tests now. It will support Firefox. Uh, as well as Chrome and Chromium and Electron. It runs headless, which means you can run it, uh, you know, lights out in a, a continuous integration environment. Um, and it runs in, in JavaScript and TypeScript, and it's it's got a relatively easy API to work with. So uh, our tester, who was on the project for about a month, spent some time and built up a suite of tests, enough that then one of our other developers who ran the project as well could take over and finish off and now have a full suite so that whenever we do a build, we can run it against it and make sure that everything is stable from a front-end user interactions perspective, like they would in a Selenium or a Protractor in Angular. The app was written in Angular, not that that matters too much, but uh, we wanted something to be easily tested uh, on the web. We also wanted to be able to install it lights out so that we could run it in an integration uh, test suite, uh, which we're going to, I think, ultimately install for our customer. Uh, but so this blog post that I wrote uh, takes what we learn in wrestling uh, AWS to the ground uh, using their code build tool. So code build is their, their tool that runs when you want to run builds on AWS and then they've got other tools that you can use to deploy and run. But I did everything in code build for this. Uh, and and it, it runs basically a command line script that, that would interact and run tests and build things. So this blog post, running Cypress test on ABS code build, walks you through what you'd have to do to set up a uh, Cypress test running against uh, an Angular application running on an Basically, I'm doing it with an S3 bucket, which is like a, a, a static hosting site. So you could do take this any direction you want to, as long as you can hit the public website. And we did. We 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 hit our application directly, which had a Spring backend, and we interacted with uh, Cognito for security, and we we interacted with S3 for file storage and checking things. So we did a lot with it, but I boiled it down to the simplest things you need to get started. So uh, as long as you've got an ABS account and the right uh, privileges. Uh, and you have Cypress uh, knowledge, a little bit of it, or at least are willing to learn it, uh, you can try this out. So I go through and I use something called CloudFormation. CloudFormation is a configuration syntax uh, that will let you set up Amazon resources by running scripts, either in JSON or in my case, YAML, uh, which is a, an indented file format. So this is directly taking 
um, you know, stuff we did, modifying uh, to a simpler example, directly taking the things we learned and applying them. So the first thing I do is I create an Amazon S3 storage bucket for files to host our website. Uh, and then I set up the permissions for it. Uh, not that I'm going to go through the syntax here. Uh, and then I have a little script that I wrote that runs the build of this thing. Uh, and then um, from and copies up. Basically, ultimately, somewhere in the middle of this, there is a... Where is it on here? NPM run build. So if you're an Angular person, that little line there is building the Angular app. Um, and then we copy the stuff to that little S3 bucket. We copy it up there and it's now hosted publicly on a website uh, based on the S3 bucket. I take that uh, and this is the app, a really simple shopping list, to-do list. I did the simplest, dumbest thing I could come up with uh, that had a simple user interface in it. So I built a simple component in an app. Uh, that lets you add to-do list items, and then there's the view for it. Uh, and then I wrote a little tiny Cypress test to uh, visit the root of the website, find the input field called name, type in soap flakes, then make sure that the input, I don't know, I'm searching for soap flakes, what do you want from me? <laughs> so then uh, I said, you know, hey, does it have the value soap flakes in the input? Should, because I typed it there. And then there's a button called add, so I'm going to look that up and click it. Uh, then I'm going to look in the table below it and says, does it contain some string called soap flakes, which it should if I added that to the list. Uh, and it also, the, add, the side effect of add should be that it cleared the input. So I look up the input again and make sure that the value is empty. So that's a simple Cypress test. Once you look at that and compare it to Selenium or other things, you realize it's actually a more, liter a more literate API. It reads better. It's a little more easy to understand uh, than the API for something like Selenium. Um, it's configured with JSON, so I set that up. Uh, then I install code build, and ultimately I'm just going to scroll down to the code build. Uh, there it is. So I teach you how this thing works. This is code build. Uh, and what we're really doing ultimately is we're running Cypress in code build uh, to run all the tests. And so that is this right here. So as long as you do all the setup properly, you can run Cypress, you can get an output, you can run it without having to set up a windowing environment, running it against a headless version of Chromium, uh, and then you can run reports and get those uh, so that you can review them. Uh, so that's it. I gave you a repo as well. There's a GitHub repo for it. Uh, feel free to take a look at that. Uh, and that has all the code if you want to download it and try it yourself. So that's the, the meat of this uh, uh, discussion around the blog post. I want to bring that up and show you, share a little bit of the, the learning that I uh, did. That's awesome. And your tutorials are always like so good. Um, oh, thank you. You, I know that you did a YouTube series. This was like maybe two years ago. We worked on it together. I did the editing. You did a tutorial. It was an Angular one. I yep. still, I'll go to check our YouTube channel and people coming in with comments like, thanks, man, you saved my project. Like, that's the this, best I can do is, you know, yeah. as long as I can give people information they could use, that's, to me, that's like the apex of my job. I love sharing information that was useful to me that then helps other people. So thank you for that. I really do yeah. appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Now for something completely different, as I would say in Monty Python. Um, Becca, you had something, you had an idea for a topic today. Um, yeah, so, so let's talk. I have I have the New York Times app and um, you know, you're like scrolling through kind of the doom and gloom of tech news. Like you have all the reps sitting in courtrooms, you've got data and privacy concerns. Yep. Um, it's just messy. And the prompt that the New York Times posed to the readers was like, what tech just brings you joy? Like what, what do you really like weather? And they got responses back of like giant apps and platforms to like some guy was like, I love my thermos yeah. like technology. Um, so I was like noodling on that this past week. And um, I'm, I'm thinking of my own personal ones. And I definitely, the first one that came top of mind to me was Spotify. There you I go. love Spotify. I don't think one tool has influenced my music taste more severely than Spotify has over the last couple of years. And I remember before we were leaving to travel, I was like chopping down all my bills and monthly payments and subscriptions and just trying to, you know, just save some money. And I chopped Spotify for like a month. Ooh. I remember being like, can't do it. <laughs> can't do it. <laughs> I got it back like in two weeks. Um, it's the, I think, no, I haven't used Pandora, you know, frequently enough to maybe make this call, but I find that Spotify, their um, their recommendations are just like more niche and much more spot on. 
I found that Pandora was kind of like, yeah, yeah, like alternative music. It's like, oh, you like music? You might like Modest Mouse. Like, okay, we moved from there. <laughs> was like 11. And like, I feel like Spotify does a really good job of kind of picking those like deep cuts for you. Like the the weekly, Discover Weekly that comes up. Oh, yeah. like, Here's what you've been listening to. Man, they throw some wild things on there once in a while. And I'm like, this is pretty all right. Um, so I love Spotify. What's funny is. Yeah, Spotify is great. I so being I, I've been in a band for a little while and just like re- playing around with musicians. We didn't really gig much lately. Um, certainly not now. So I would get all of our set lists and all the stuff they wanted me to learn and put them in in quick set lists. And they had everything. They had everything you could possibly want. And then before that, I used it for like when I was doing jazz. Um, I was playing in a jazz quartet for a long time. I would pull up and get all sorts of music and just listen. Because the best way of learning how to play jazz is to hear it and listening it and absorbing it. Because it's really more about expression than it is about technical expertise, mm-hmm. you know. And so they have everything. They've got the deepest catalog of any um, music streaming app I've used. And it's always been that way. Ever since it first came out, it's been fantastic. So, yeah, Spotify is a big one for me. Um, I was also thinking about uh, my list. And I put Spotify on there. And I'm glad you went first because I know mm-hmm. your pick. Yeah. Um, but also my, my electric car, you know, this is a, a, the geek in me. I didn't buy a Tesla, uh, at the time, uh, Teslas were still going for sixty seventy thousand dollars, Um, and they were, you know, the first model threes were coming out and they were 30 something. You had to wait over a year to get one. Um, and I just walked over to the Chevy dealer and went, Oh, the bolt, <laughs> the bolt has like 240, 250, uh, miles of range. So it's in that kind of lower end Tesla uh, mileage range. They've just upped it to over 260, I think, which is a little bit more. Um, but, you know, the cool thing about it was I bought it in 2017 and I have yet to have an increase in my electric bill. So I don't pay for what you would pay for gas. OK, my payment for the car is a little more because I, I got the car and I, you know, traded in a car that wasn't completely paid off. So I'm paying a little more per month for that. But at the same time, I'm not paying anything for the fueling of the car because the electricity is part of my budget Pico plan. Um, so, wow, you know, and it doesn't really trickle that much more than like an air conditioner would when it charges. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. And it doesn't need the maintenance other cars do. It doesn't have oh. oil. It, you know, doesn't have a transmission to blow up. It's just a, a motor right to a drive uh, train and it's easy to drive and fun to drive. It's got pep. So that I'll tell you of the things I bought. Besides a few musical instrument things, uh, that thing has given me tons and tons of joy. I just, I just love it. It's a That's really so cool. Yeah, it's you know, and I hope it lasts longer than its loan, and mm-hmm. the battery sticks around uh, for another couple of years because it it'll be a zero maintenance thing. Oh, the other secret thing about electric cars for anyone in the market for a car is they use regenerative braking, which means that the motor slows down the car as much as it can before the brakes even kick in, so your brakes can last. 80, 100,000 miles, which is nuts, you know? Yeah. There's no exhaust system to blow out. It's it's just a really good idea. Now, what isn't it good for? Long-range trips. You know, Teslas have a charging system that's nationwide, and even them, you kind of have to plan your, you know, trips based on where the superchargers are. But uh, right now, with the charging system that the Bolt and a lot of other cars have, which is called CCS charging, um, it's a DC charging system. There are not many uh, charging centers uh, around the country compared to what they would be for the Tesla. Mm-hmm. But uh, they're, they're trying to improve that. But under the current administration, good luck. Uh, mm-hmm. They're not really looking at electric cars. Um, but anyway, so that's the one that brings me joy. Do you have any other ones you're thinking of? Yeah, and I also encourage anyone who's on right now to drop it in the comments because um, yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. fun to think about. Um, so this is maybe not so much joy, but just like it really takes a lot of pain out of life. It's just money transferring apps like Venmo and Zelle. Yeah. How many times I use those things. Um, also, I'm a really nosy person and I love to see the social feed in Venmo. It totally oh, yeah? be a social feed. I don't know why there is one, but like what someone spends money on or hands money to another person for is like, I feel like weirdly intimate and personal, but I love to lurk that feed and just see what my friends are paying each other for and stuff. Um, do, do they do they uh, choose to share their Venmo or something like that? Yeah, it's like so, a social. I I sent fifteen dollars to my girlfriend for flowers or something. You know, someone said right. right? I yeah. hide it too. Um, but the funny that wasn't story, me. 
(laughs) (laughs) We were, um, we just bought a house this year. It was our first house. And um, Mm -hmm. you know how that month before you close the sale, it's like they are just have a magnifying glass to all the money that you're spending, what money's coming in, what money's coming out, your loan processors and stuff. Um, So one of the things that we had to do was prove that we were paying rent the place that we stayed at last. So we paid our roommate who then paid our landlord. So we would make our monthly rent payments via Venmo to our roommate. And each month, my boyfriend and I would get more and more creative with like the wacky titles that we would put on it. So like one month we paid her for like synthetic hairballs for ceramic cats, like that old Stephen Wright joke. And meanwhile, we're having to like scan these and print these out to hold up as legal documents our poor loan process. So there was probably like, what is going on? My son would do that to me constantly with his Venmos um, because he would, you know, he has his iPhone he finally bought his own. He's a big boy now, Ooh. but he's got his own uh, iPhone with his own payment. But yet he's on our iPhone, uh, Apple uh, iTunes account or whatever. So he still accidentally purchases things and like pony up, you know, so he'll put stupid things in there too. Like, you know, <laughs> sent money to boss man for the thing. I'm like, what does that mean? Uh, <laughs> so he's really silly. I, I actually have one of those. There's something called green light. Uh, if you have teenage kids and you want them to be able to spend some money and you don't want to have to go to the bank to shell out bucks, you can get a debit card for them that is fully funded from an app. Huh. And you can say, oh, okay, I'm going to put you know, $20 on green light, and you can spend it on anything. Um, and and you know, it's easy. It's instant. And then it's basically like their allowance card. So that has saved me from being bothered by my daughter. I'm going to go out and get some pizza. You don't have any cash. I'm like, all right, hold on. Boop, 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 done. Whoa. Um, they first hated it because like, I'm not, you know, they thought it was like a kid card. I'm like, Dude, it's a debit card. It works everywhere. Yeah. And now they're like, it's called Greenlight. Greenlight, huh? Greenlight. Mm -hmm. So you can just load it up straight from your account and hand it to them and it's accepted pretty much universally. Whoa. It's it's a Visa card. I think it's a Visa. Yeah, Visa. Yeah. So um, it's not a credit card. It's purely a debit card. And then when it's empty, it's empty. Too bad, kid. Um, But you can also do things like set up allowances and, and, you know, decide when you're going to vend based on you know, certain goals they have to achieve, but I haven't gotten that far because I'm, I'm inherently lazy. I got work to do every day and I can't bug my kids about, did you do this, that, and the other thing? Because guess what? They're teenagers. They don't do anything. <laughs> I love them, but they don't do anything. You know, I, I think I'm going to next find a technically uh, run bulldozer. And if I can kind of like remote it and just bulldoze all their stuff out of the house, <laughs> that's a, I, that would spark a lot of joy for me. Yeah, yeah. Spark of joy. <laughs> do you have anything else? What do you got? Um, film, film cameras. Yeah. I, that's like such a dying art. There are, I think, only two places that I can think of off the top of my head in Philly that still develop it. They're dropping one by one. But man, every time I get a roll of film to develop, it is like Christmas morning. Like that is just because you forget, you know? And yeah. I'll go on vacation with my family who they used film growing up. And they're like, why would you shoot film when you have your cell phone camera? Which I get it. They're speaking, they're speaking from a place of being burned before, which like yeah. I get that too. How many blank rolls have you shot? Like, oh, there's mm-hmm. definitely a roll of film in here. Open it up. Nothing. But that's the fun of it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah and yeah, you, know, yeah. you have that, that memory in your mind's eye of the pictures that you took that you really wanted to come out on that roll. So you still have those. And there's just like, it's like listening to a record versus like a digital recording. There's like a warmth and a kind of fuzziness to a film picture um, that, you know, a digital picture just doesn't quite have. So. I just have several words to say to you. Black and white green. It's the yes. coolest. Yes. And it's different for every film, you know, tripan versus like, you know, T-Max 3200 versus us. Oh, you got you. You're hitting a vein here because. Yeah. And I know you do black and white, a lot of black and white. I, I did. I did. Like I, I, I've been. My best friend here has been like the camera you take everywhere. But I know when I take those pictures, they're snapshots. They're, I mean, I couldn't blow it up and make a yeah. really good photo out of it. Yeah. Um, I, I think when I'm getting a little bit older, you know, I, I did develop for a while. So what I would do, my process yeah. was I would shoot black and white. I had a changing bag. I would take the, the film out, put it in a developing tank. It's only seven <laughs> minutes. It's easy to do. And that's also part of the fun. Can you develop a roll of film? You know, and the answer is sometimes, <laughs> but you eventually <laughs> yeah. get good at it. And then, then you get a system going, you know, developer doesn't cost that much. 
you know, you have a tank. And then what I did was I would, I would dry it in my laundry room and then I would scan it with an Epson scanner, which is by the way, sitting over here. If you ever want to borrow it. Um, I have a, a, a nice little Epson 30 something or other 32, seven, I forget the number of it scanner that had a, a cathode light on it. Yeah. So you could put it, you could put the, the, um, you could put the the film on, get a high res scan of it, and then and then get rid of all the dust marks in Photoshop and print. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. easier, get it developed like you do and get it printed from someone else. Let them deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's definitely something that we want to try and tackle here now that we have the space too. Just developing it yourself. I've never been through that process, and it looks really really cool. I can I can drop off some stuff at at, at uh, the office if you want to try. I have some stuff. That would so, be so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. And by cool. the way, what kind of camera are you like shooting with? I have a Yashica FX3 right now, just a little guy, okay. but it's easy to keep on my person when I'm walking around the city, but I definitely want to go for a medium format next. That's, yeah. the, that's the next goal. For people who don't know medium format or too young or have uh, never seen them, they're the, the box of your big cameras. They're the, instead of the negative being about that big, you know, roughly 35 by 24 millimeter, it's like six by six mm -hmm. centimeter. And because it's a larger negative, it takes gorgeous pictures. Um, yeah, and you can blow them up, make them big. And sometimes too, like even the fun of film, like I had a bunch of rolls when we were traveling and I had them in my backpack and we were on a beach somewhere in Spain and the waves came up, grabbed my bag and pulled it in the ocean. I'm just thinking, oh my God, my oh no. rolls of film that are in there. But you know what? The salt water, when it got in there, made this really beautiful effect over all the pictures. So when we got oh, to cool. film, there were like splashes of color of purple and orange and it ended up just being a really fun surprise. So yes, film is so beautiful. Yeah. Now wait, so you, do you have a place people can go to see your photography? It's Instagram, right? Yeah, I do a lot on Instagram and also on BeccaReffer.com. It's like That's less it. my you know professional stuff and more just film and writing and stuff like that. Yeah, no, your your color photos and and like you, know, you you'll take like an isolate of something or you'll take a, a, a like a nice shot of like an alley or a door and yeah, or flowers or mixtures of pungent things. color. Yeah, is yeah. my favorite. That's your big thing. It seems yeah. It's great so yes photography in general by the in way general, great. you yeah. can never be done learning it it's a great hobby and I'll, um, you know it's hard to be a full-time profession unless you're really really connected yeah. but it's it's great to make art and even just to get cool stuff you know back yeah all right cool my other one that i have um well i have two is i got the apple watch and i'm a nerd but i have been sedentary being a programmer in 51 um, you tend to sit in front of these computers all day. And I know it's stupid when you hear like gamification where like apps, you know, end up being something where you get little rewards and stuff. I got suckered into it because now at least I'm recording like the walks I'm doing and trying to do more exercise and swimming and stuff like that. And it's, it's, it's actually making me focus more on getting a little healthier, which is good. So I like that. I like the fact that it's got a uh, a phone thing on it that I can, you know, do the Dick Tracy thing and have a conversation from my wrist and annoy the person on the other line <laughs> um, and the notifications. So now I, I, I've been wearing my Apple watch series five since I got it. And it's, I really like it a lot. So, so worth it. Cause I've been thinking about getting one of those too. Yeah. I, I think my wife, I might get her one uh, for yeah. our anniversary because she runs a lot and she wants to track what's going on. And, you know, she she tries to put things in through her phone. I'm like, mm, it's, that's oh, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she might like one. So we'll see. And then the other thing was, I, I'm a, a guitar nerd. So I, I picked up this uh, all, all in one effects unit called the Pod Go from Line 6. And it's like every stomp box you could want for like 400 bucks, which each stomp box is usually 100 bucks. But it's everything you could want. You move them around. It, it, it uses the same technology they've been using for years for this, but it's nice. It's small. It's got a little expression pedal. So that's my nerd thing that I like for music. Make me sound like whatever I want to, except for the talent. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So coming up next week, we're going to have some uh, conversations with uh, Matt Gilbride uh, and um, Keith Gregory on some AWS coolness. Uh, so a little preview of that. Uh, and I don't know, is there anything else going on out there? I don't know if I have much. Summer's kind of slow. Yeah. You know? Oh, I want to plug a podcast really quickly. A really good one that I oh, yeah. on this week. Um, it's called 20,000 Hertz. And the premise of the show is taking these, these really recognizable sounds that we hear every day and breaking them down. So like, first of all, what were the decisions that went into it? The, the one that I just listened to most recently was the Netflix, like, 
Dodom at the I heard place. that one with you. Yeah, once you told me about it, I heard that one. It's great. That's really cool. And then um, another one that they they break down is that THX, that like, oh, yeah. You know, the, I forget yeah. what they call it. They, there's a word for it. Um, yeah. The heat tone, I think. And then um, Windows 95, uh, Brian Eno, who made that. Now, I actually have it pulled up. So the Windows 95 startup sound is like 3.25 seconds or something like that. Yep. But someone on YouTube slowed this down to like 1 800th of a second. And <laughs> it sounds like a Brian Eno ambient soundscape. So I'm going to play it. Let's see if you can hear it through this. Which is. I'm sorry, Becca, you didn't get the glow sticks out. <laughs> <laughs> that is it's, wild. It's so Brian Eno ambient album when you slow it down and you can you can really see his touch on it there. Um but yeah, great podcast, really fascinating to listen through. In the same vein of like breaking down music, um this the song exploder is another really good one where they take a song and they mm. really interview an artist of like down to the lyrics, down to the musical choices. How did this song come together? That's a, that's another really good music one. There's a guy named Rick Beato on YouTube who does that from a musical, like uh, he's, a, he's a studio recording engineer and, and owner. And he will say, what makes this song great? And what he does is he takes all the stems, they're called stems, all the, the separate tracks, and he'll play little isolation pieces like he did... Um, uh, outshined by uh, Soundgarden, which is a great, great tune. And he would like pull it all apart and say, "Here's what the bass player is doing." He's just slamming the bass, and you hear all these, you know, slap sounds and stuff. And they hear you, you hear the singer, and he's just per pitch perfect. And this is before auto tune, and you know, this is what he's doing. And you know, someone was calling in from one song. Was someone was calling in and singing the lyric from a telephone. Whoa! And you could hear it as a background lyric. Which one was that? I can't remember anymore. But so they but, used the telephone call as like a harmony in the background. Yeah, they did. They yeah, did. So they cool. wanted a certain sound, and they just called it in through telephone. And and the and the thing it does with the audio to make it really tinny actually worked really well for the audio. So Rick Beato, what makes that what makes this song great is another one like that. I love this. Oh, things. cool. Yeah, it's on YouTube, uh, but it's not, it's it's a really cool one. Yeah, well, let me see if I can. I can see pull up another show that I might have. Let's see. And do, 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 do. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got a funny one. Dead Eyes. Have you ever heard of Dead Eyes? The podcast. No. no. This cracks me up. So it's. Uh, let me see if I can figure out who he is. Uh, Connor. I don't know Connor's last name. But because uh, it's not showing me here, but it's called Dead Eyes from from Headgum uh, is the is the publisher of it. OK, so and this is really funny. Uh, this one guy went he was an actor. He still is. Uh, he went in for a scene for a Tom Hanks movie. It was uh, I, th I think it was uh, was it Saving Private Ryan? I think it might have been. So he went in for a scene for it and he auditioned locally and they flew him out to London and he was all set to go in uh, and do his audition and then all of a sudden, some assistant comes in and says, sorry, Mr. Hanks does not want you to audition. He says that you have dead eyes. And this guy's like, what? Blown mind. Goes back to New York, is depressed. And he, then he gets on with his life and forgets about it. But then he's like, I got to get another podcast going. I'm going to explore this and talk to everyone I know. And I guess he's been like, you know, the, the, the person you know that like has a story that they will never stop telling that bothers them so much. You're like here goes this story again. That's him. But he turned into a podcast and he interviewed a ton of people around the fact that, like, do I have dead eyes? And, oh, I was there for the audition. I was your limo driver. It's hilarious. Oh, man. It's called Dead Eyes. And it's really, if you want something to take you out of like your day to day and make you laugh your head off. Yeah, that's the cool, one. Cool. Yeah, yeah. And anyway. this guy's like hyper fixation turned oh, into yeah. a podcast. That's fantastic. It's like Con Connor's like, do you, do you, would you say that, that that this is obsessive to me? I don't feel like I'm obsessed. They're like, <laughs> Connor, this is all you talk about every day. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very funny guy. All right. So anyway, so that's the story. Um, great. So we will see you, uh, everybody, next week. Same time, same channel. AWS uh, stuff. Yep. yep. AWS stuff is the main topic. Uh, and uh, we'll go from there. So for the Tech Chat Tuesday. Yeah, at that time. Hey, I'm Ken Rimple. I'm Becca Rufford. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.